Good afternoon and welcome back to Fight Sports Uncovered. I'm your host, Mark Joubert, and uh, we're coming to you today from Durant's Boxing Gym here in Linksfield, Johannesburg. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, you know we've been talking about this quite, quite often, quite, I mean, almost every single show. The lockdown has had a, a major, major impact on many, many of our athletes. And slowly but surely, many of the sports, many of the athletes are returning to their theatres. We've got guys coming back to the track. We've got netball back on the courts. And today we're talking athletes getting back into the ring. Yeah, boxing was back. A couple of weeks back, we had an absolutely epic night of boxing. The very first event here in South Africa post the lockdown. And uh, one of those athletes we're going to be talking to um, is the man to my right. Uh, he is the subject of today's show. He is, uh, I mean, if I just look at his record, 16 fight record, uh, 13 wins, two losses, that one draw, uh, 11 knockouts. Uh, he is the current uh, WBA, uh, Pan Africa Super Welterweight Champion. He is the new IBO uh, All Africa Super Welterweight Champion, and he is the winner of the uh, Four at War tournament. Uh, welcome to my guest, Brandon Taser. Thank you very much. So let's talk about those two belts, and uh, we're just going to get those belts coming because these absolutely must be your pride and joy. Yeah, you know this is this is what we work for. You know this is that we put all in all the hours for everything we do in the gym, all the blood, sweat, and tears. This is you know this is what we go for. You know this is what we need. This is what we work for. So first of all, officially congratulations. You are are, are, are essentially the baddest super welterweight on the continent. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> kind of nice ring to that, isn't it? Yeah, no, you know, there's a nice ring to it. It's uh, always, always nice to be recognized and uh, be seen what you've been working for for so long. Um, so I think let's get rid of those belts and then we can... We can... So, Brandon, just talking about this, I mean, this is ultimately, you know, probably one of the greatest moments of your, of your professional career so far. It's a young career. Like we said, you know, 16 bouts in, 16 professional fights in. How did boxing, how did it all start for you in the sport? Well, boxing started for me with my father. Uh, he was a former SA champion in the super middleweight division. Uh, so growing up, I was always, always had boxing around me, always had it uh, in my family. Um, I've, never really, I've never really was interested in boxing until I was like 18 years old. Uh, so when I turned 18, I decided, you know, I want to try something new, try something in this new with the sports. I was always into rappy, so I started going into boxing. And yeah, my love for boxing started the first day I stepped into amateur gym. So you had a very short amateur career. And then what, almost, you almost got about five years to the day that you won those wonderful titles. You turned pro. That very first fight, um, you know, after that first fight, what was that? That was uh, uh, the 4th of October, 2015. Um, you then went on a nine fight win streak. Um, what was that like? I mean, obviously getting, turning pro, you obviously want to start well. I mean, I think your first three fights were against debutants as well. Um, but how does it feel as a youngster getting into the sport to start on such a fantastic fight streak? You know, as a youngster, uh, getting into the sport, it's tough. You, you're nervous. You don't know. It's something new. Yeah, you've been sparring. You've been training a long time for it. You had amateurs uh, preparation for it. But, you know, getting into the ring with a crowd around you and everything, it's, it's, it's different, you know. So it's, uh, it's a weird feeling. But uh, after your first fight, you just want more and you want more and you want more. Addictive, want, eh? Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy addictive. You know, you want to get in the ring every single weekend, you know. Um, so f that, that, that nine win streak, is, is, that's, that's purely hunger, you know. Uh, you, you come into the sport, you want to achieve something, you want to show people, listen, yeah, I'm here to make a statement. And uh, that, that's what I was trying to do, you know. I went on, on like you said, a nine win streak, uh, which felt amazing. It just made me want to get more and do more. In that nine fight win streak, virtually every single fight, you didn't... You never involved the judges. I think there was the one fight, John Bapape, that went to decision. But the other eight fights, you left that decision in your own hands, um, either TKO, either knockout. Um, that's also got to be something that, that really helps with the confidence and really gets you, like you said, that hunger, that addiction of wanting to get back in there and knock more guys out. 100%. Uh, you know, getting a knockout over a points decision uh, is, is always 
what, what you actually want, even no matter what who says, that, that is what you actually want. Um, to be honest, my first uh, points decision, it scared me, eh? Uh, I'm going to be honest, it actually did, that scared me. Um, you know, because you don't know which way it's going to go. You know what you did, you know what he did. But the way people see the fight, everyone sees the fight differently. So the first time I went to points, it actually scared me a bit. Uh, and from there on, I was trying to, you know, make either a convincing point decision or, or, or knock the guy out, you know. So, yeah, that was, it, it was scary, but something I had to go through to, to get that feeling of knowing what I need to do in the ring. The two losses, both of those losses came um, during title fights. That first loss, Nkulele uh, Kumflongu, um, that took place also for a title. And then the first uh, meeting between yourself and Boyd Allen, and that was uh, for the then vacant WBA Pan Africa Super Welterweight title. Um, obviously losses as a boxer, as a professional athlete, you go back to, you come home to your camp, you reevaluate how much learning how much changes how many changes did you have to bring into your fight skill set to 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 learn from those two losses uh i'd say it's it's more like a mental fight game that you have to bring back in um yes yeah you can always uh work on your art you know perfect the jab move a bit more throw a better right hand or whatever uh you can always improve on that but uh I think that the, the hardest part of all of it is, uh, is, is mentally, you know, it's taking a loss mentally, especially after going on a nine win streak for me, uh, it was tough, you know, I had to, to get my mental mindset about the sports and where I want to be in the sport, right, you know, um, so I think mentally it was harder for me than physically, so yeah, uh, just mentally getting back into it, getting, getting that confidence back, getting everything that you had and you lost it trying to get it back, that was tough for me. But yeah, that, that, that's the biggest part for me. It was getting mentally strong. Professionally speaking, you've been fighting now five years. Um, one would argue that you have a fairly decent grip around the art of boxing, the sweet science. How much, you spoke just, just now about the mental aspect of the game. How much now, more than ever, is it a mental thing for you as a fighter then it is a skill set because you can change camps. I mean, you've changed camps, you've changed home gyms, um, you've changed your focus around certain aspects of your game, uh, around your fight. But how big of a mental component is this sport of boxing? But boxing is mentally more than anything else, you know. Uh, yes, it's throwing punches, hitting the other guy, trying to inflict some damage or you know, get in his head, but it's a chess game, and uh, that, that's what I've always been saying, always been said too as well, it's a chess game. Uh, mentally, since I joined the Durant's gym, you know, mentally I know I have to be strong, I have to be mentally ready, I have to be mentally fit as well to, to do what I have to do, to do what my camp wants me to do. And uh, for, it was tough when I moved gyms in the beginning, you know, getting into the way things work here, but uh, I think since my last three fights, I've actually adapted to, to the way things work here and, and I've done everything in my power to do things the way they do it here because I knew they had a winning plan. So mentally, the, the, that's what boxing is about. It's all about mental strength. Talking about Durant's gym and the stable here at Durant's gym, uh, it's a very, very powerful stable. I mean, we're looking world champion a number of other champions that train out of Durant's gym. Um, does that put pressure on you now that you've come home with these two belts? Are you now the guy that, that, that everyone within the gym is now sort of looking to perform well against in the sparring sessions uh, to be able to uh, learn from maybe as well uh, in terms of what you can bring to the gym as a whole? I won't say I'm, I'm, I'm the guy that everyone wants to spar against or learn something from. Uh, the gym here, yeah, this is the, we're more like a family, you know, and, and I've really grown to love the people I, I train with and I love my coaches as well. Um, so this is definitely a family. Um, sparring wise, we always learn something from each other, no matter if I learn something from you, you learn something from me. So yeah, but coming to this gym, this stable, this strong stable, uh, having the champions and world champions we have in this gym, you know, it does put some pressure on you to perform, to do your best, to want to be better, because you don't want to let anyone down, including yourself or anyone in this gym, because we train really hard for it. 
In terms of that preparation, I spoke about the training aspect. How important have you found this journey? I mean, once again, five years as a professional. How important has the coach, and in this instance, Damien Durant, been the last couple of years for you in that development as an up-and-coming and now continental champion? You know, my coach has, has, has a lot to do with the way I perform, the way I look at boxing, the way I train even. Um, both my coaches, my coach Anderson Kazemba and Damien Durant, you know, they're both brilliant coaches and they push you to your limits and when you get to your limit, they push you even more, you know. Right. They, they, they really want to bring out the best in you and I can honestly say they're the best coaches in this country because the amount of time and effort and manpower they put into you as a fighter just to, for one camp and they do this with every single fighter of them is incredible, you know. They really get you ready mentally, physically, everything. They put 110% into you as a fighter and uh, not only that, the, the, the nicest, most wonderful thing about everything for me was is they actually believe that you can go places, you know, and you really need that reassurance sometimes from a coach or a, a stable mate to get you confidently ready for whatever it's coming. But I suppose that's where the mental aspect comes from, because if you are stepping into the ring, irrespective of who your opponent is, if you don't believe and your team doesn't believe that you can knock that, that guy out, the guy standing across the ring from you, you've already lost that fight, haven't you? 100%, yes. You, you, need that, you need that around you. You need that confidence. And your team needs to be confident in you as well, that you guys put in the work together. And that's what I have at the moment with the runs. Last five years, the biggest sort of aspect around this journey in terms of being a professional fighter, what's the biggest aspect been for you? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> there's so many things, you know. There's, there's a lot of things that played a big role in, in the last five years for me. Um, I don't think I can pick one, you know. I, they, they all just play, play a big role for me and it's, it's everything, everything about it is just amazing. I suppose there's so much we can talk about. What I'd like to do when we come back, and take a quick break, but when we come back, I'd like to talk a little bit about COVID. Um, we'd like to talk about the lockdown, get a view from you. So um, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to get a better understanding from the continental champ exactly how tough the national lockdown was for him because he was in the process of building up towards a tournament final uh, performance, and then we had the lockdown. So don't go away. We're going to be right back with all of those thoughts and his insight. See you Get faith-inspiring testimonies for living in divine health from The Healing School magazine. It's free of charge and easy to download. Just log on to www.enterthehealingschool.org slash magazine. Fill in your name and email address. Download now. Welcome back to Fight Sports Uncovered. Yes, I'm your host, Mark Joubert. And uh, if you missed the first half of our show, you'll have missed uh, the journey that the currently the baddest super welterweight on the continent has gone through to get to where he is now. Five years ago, almost to the day, he made his debut as a professional boxer. And uh, like I said, to the day, five years later, he became a, a multiple um, uh, organization uh, super welterweight champion. My guest today, Brandon Taser. Brandon, we were talking just before the break just about the journey that you've gone through as a young professional boxer. Um, if I look back at your career, uh, 18 months ago, just around about 18 months ago, that second defeat, uh, it was your first meeting against Boyd Allen. Um, in between then, um, there's been a lot that's happened. I mean, we look at, uh, you know, you, you had another warm-up fight, I think, after that um, within the weight division, Mbia Kanku. You beat him um, quite convincingly. And then it was the opportunity for the four at war tournament hosted by Golden Gloves at Empress Palace. Your first fight against Rock Knapp, um, once again, a convincing performance. Okay. Um, and then COVID hit. Lockdown. So the first question for me, and I suppose for many fight fans out there, how tough was a national lockdown where, first of all, for a good part of it, you weren't allowed out of your house, 
Then you were only allowed to do a bit of training, what for, like three hours a day. Then it gradually got bigger and we could start training more and more. Then you could start coming into a gym, but you weren't allowed to spar anyone. How tough is that on, on, on well, first of all, how tough was that on you and in terms of the other fighters in the stable, what was the mixed emotions going on in terms of them and how they had to get back into the sport? You know, COVID was really, really tough. Um, on not just me, but a lot of other fighters. You know, a lot of, a lot of promoters couldn't put the fights up anymore. So you had contracts that were signed for fights. And, you know, COVID hit and, and the promoters couldn't do the tournaments anymore. So a lot of fighters lost a lot of in income. Um, I remember at the stage when COVID hit, uh, we were a week out from our fights. Yeah. Literally the last week, so we put in seven weeks of, of hard work and dedication, you know, to, to, to do, just push that last week of weight cut and get to the fight, you know, and then COVID hits and they tell us the fight's off, you know. Um, that, that's tough, honestly, that's very tough because you put in a lot of hard work, you put in the hours, and a lot of the guys in, in, in the Durant stable were also preparing for fights at that time, and then the fights just get cancelled, you know, so... I think the COVID hit us very hard, you know, um, us as athletes, we, we depend on, on that salary from, yeah. from fighting, you know, we don't, not everyone has a job on the side. Um, so it's, it, it was very tough. Um, I know going into lockdown, we weren't allowed to go out of our houses for a long time, um, which is also tough as an as a athlete because you're used to training every day, your body's used to, used to a routine, you know, and getting out of that routine was very tough. Then we could start training for a little bit, made a little bit better, training, getting your, just getting into it, getting loose, just staying active, you know. Uh, I think when the gym started to open again, we were all very grateful because um, we know we could get back into the gym, get back to what we love to do, you know. So, yeah, COVID, uh, in, in, in all, it was very tough, but uh, it, for a small part of it, it was something I needed. Um, we also got to work on a few things during the lockdown. You know, you could reflect on yourself and see, listen, I can work on this, I can work on that. So for you personally as a boxer, you could change a few things. You can do a few things that you couldn't always do in the gym and during preparation. But uh, yeah, in, in, in all it was tough, but it was something we had to get through. So let's have a look. A couple of weeks ago, you became a multi-organization uh, continental champion. Um, if we were to go back to just before COVID, you say you were one week out from stepping into the ring with Boyd Allen in that final of the Four at War tournament. If you look at the Brandon Taser then and you look at the Brandon Taser now that stepped into the ring a couple of weeks ago, was that a fundamentally different person? I'd say so, yes. You know, um, mentally I was, I was stronger. I was, I was more hungry for the fight as well because of the COVID. So I'd say yes, he was a different fighter. Not that I wasn't ready that time, and uh, I would have still gotten the, jun the job done at that stage. Might have taken me a bit longer, but I would still have it, had gotten it done. Um, but yes, the Brandon that stepped into the ring a few weeks ago was definitely a different Brandon, definitely a stronger Brandon, definitely a better guy. So um, in, in all, I always say, um, you know, things happen for a reason, and, and I know God has a plan with everything he does. So I, I truly believe that COVID was part of God's plan to, to, to help me to be the Brandon I was that stepped into the ring on that a few weeks ago. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for the tough times we had to go through to enjoy the, the good times we have now. Let's fast forward, you know, well, when I say fast forward, let's go to the fight night a couple of weeks ago. You predicted you would finish Boyd. Um, third round, knockout. Um, did you see that? Did you see it that early? And, and, and was that the picture that you had for this fight in your mind? You know, I told Boyd I was going to knock him out. Um, the first fight was a very close one, I believe, at best. Because it was a split decision. Yes, yeah. it was a split decision for, for Boyd. Yeah. You know, I, I believe I did enough to win the fight. Uh, at best, it could have been a draw, but not a split decision. Uh, it's got to be heartbreaking. It's, 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 it's really, really tough. You know, I, I, I put in a lot of hard work for that fight, and I really felt like I did good in that fight. Yeah. But, you know, the judges didn't see it that way. And 
when my second opportunity came to meet Boyd, I, I told him, listen, I'm not letting the judges handle this one because I don't know how it's going to go. So I told him I was going to knock him out and I predicted it. I never predict anything like that except for my last two fights. I was the one predicting something. And, uh, you know, I came out with a mission. I had a plan. I had that hunger inside of me. I wanted to show everyone that the first fight was a fluke. Yeah. It wasn't what everyone thought it was, you know. And uh, I didn't think I was going to knock him out in the third round, to be honest. Uh, I know Boyd came from an MMA background, so I know he has a very strong chin. I, I mean, he took elbows, knees, yeah, yeah, yeah. kicks to the, to the face, you know, and he stood. And um, to knock him out on the chin wasn't really our plan. Uh, we just wanted to put some pressure on him, we wear him down, and then, you know, take the fight and see how long he can take it, you know. Third round knockout came as a, as a very big surprise for me and a lot of other people, you know, knocking him out on the chin, also being the first guy to knock out Boyd Allen. Yeah. So, you know, that, that made me very happy. <laughs> you know, not only because I predicted it and I lived up to my word, of, of what I predicted to do, but I, I did something that a lot of pe other people couldn't do, even in another sport, which is something something very nice for me. Um, so yeah, I, I, I had to knock him out, I had to take it, I had to show everyone that the first fight wasn't what they thought it was. So you've done that. Social media, a lot of people jumped on social media and spoke about the controversial nature of the the referee's decision or call to end the fight. Um, many of them talking about the fact that it should never have been ended like that. Boyd should have been given time. But at the end of the day, if we look back at the footage, he's standing with his arms on the ring. He's not in full control of his, of, of, of his body weight. He hasn't stepped forward like the referee has requested. And the referee has made a call that in the referee's opinion, Boyd was not in a position to continue that fight. Your thoughts on What's been going on on social media? Yeah, you know, there's been a lot of talk on social media. I try not to get too involved. In I'm that. sure you don't. <laughs> you know, if, if, if you get too invested on social media, you, you lose your mind. So I try not to get in, too involved in that. Yes, I read all the comments. I, I've seen what everyone has to say. And to be honest, you know, maybe Boyd could have went on. Maybe he couldn't have. But either way, if he went on after that round, it would have been a lot worse for him. Things would have been very bad for him, you know. The things like that, that the ref make a call like that, that's career dependent, you know. Boyd's uh, uh, not, not a young guy anymore. So if he had come back the next round, maybe the knockout would have been worse, you know. Um, to be honest, everyone knows the boxing rules. If Boyd didn't know, that's not my problem. His camp should have taught him the boxing rules then. Hanging on the ropes, everyone knows if you get knocked down, you go to the corner, you show the ref you're ready. He didn't, he hanged on the ropes. Nothing we can do about it, you know. Um, it, it was one of those things that you have to know the rules. You have to, you have to want the fight. And I honestly believe Boyd was scared. You know, I, I, I don't believe that he wanted to, to continue the fight. I, I could feel it, I could sense it. I, I had that, that feeling that he didn't want to continue. And I don't care what he says or what anyone else says on social media. You know, the fight wasn't stopped unfairly or wasn't stopped too early. It was stopped the correct way because the ref saw he wasn't in, in control of his body weight, like you said, and, you know, making a judgment call on that to say, listen, yeah, let me put that guy out there and he gets hurt even more. Yeah. That would have been bad for, bad for the ref. And the ref's also, in general, there to look out for the boxers. So, um, yeah, it happened the way it happened. They can say what they want to say, but I know I won fair and square. Bottom line is, you fought each other twice. The record currently stands one apiece. Chances of a trilogy? I really doubt that. Okay. Um, you know, if, if the fight presents itself and the money's right, you know, obviously we'll probably take the fight. Um, but I really doubt it. I think the way the last fight went compared to the first fight, uh, I think I really made a statement that Boyd's not on my level. He'll never be on my level. You know, yes, he can, he can beat a few of the local guys. No disrespect to Boyd, but he's not going to make it on the international scene of the boxing world. So uh, I'm, I'm going on to bigger things now. I'm going on to, to go for the international level. You know, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to push myself to be. So the chances of a fight between me and Boyd happening again, chances are very slim. You mentioned earlier, a first knocking Boyd out. 
The other first was his first loss. Um, is this something that, that you, as a, as a young athlete, as a professional boxer, you go into a fight looking at him and going, he's got an O there, um, undefeated, uh, never been knocked out. Is that something that you as a fighter go in as one of your goals? Or is it literally, let's first get the win, and if any of that other stuff comes up, we're going to be happy? You know, in general, you, as a young fighter, you look at a guy who has an untouched record, you know, 10 and 0, 15 and 0, 20 and 0, whatever the case may be. Um, yes, as a young fighter, you want to take that over away. It's, 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 it's in our blood, it's in our nature, it's in the sport of boxing. You want to take that over away. And usually when it comes to press conferences and so on, that, that is the one thing that's mentioned the most, is yeah, yeah. you're going to take his over away, you know? Um, so I think for this fight, I wasn't really f too much focused on that. I was really just focused on getting the win, getting my job done and showing everyone that, you know, I, I want to I wanna do what I came here to do, you know. I wanted to win those belts, you know, and, and that, that, that was what was important for me. Uh, seeing that we fought the first time, I think the O wasn't that big of a deal for me. But uh, I think definitely after the fight, knowing that, you know, I knocked out a guy that's been nev never been knocked out before. And on top of that, I was his first loss. Uh, you know, that, that is something as a young fighter you pride yourself to have behind you, you know. So, yeah, I think as any fights in general, if you see a guy with the over record, you want to take it away. Final question. As a young fighter, What's your message to young athletes, young boxers out there coming out of this lockdown, having doubted, having, uh, maybe having concerns, having issues around do they want to carry on in the sport with what's going on in the world, what's going on in the sport? What's your message to those young fighters? You know, to the, the young fighters out there and everyone uh, in, in, in a weird state of mind, not knowing what they want to do, <clears throat> just, just follow your heart. That, that, that's all I can say, you know. Follow your heart, pray to God, you know. He will show you the way, you know. There was a long time that I was feeling the same way. I didn't know if I wanted to continue in the sport of boxing and didn't know where I was going with my life, you know. And uh, I prayed a hell of a lot. And, you know, I just kept on going to the gym, just kept on preparing, kept on doing what I do on a normal basis. And, you know, eventually things came, came into place for me. So never give up on your dream. If, if boxing is your dream, and I don't know how hard it is for you, or if it's not something you think you can do, you know, just keep on going. You know, eventually you will know if, if that is for you. And uh, if you put in the hard work and the dedication, you know, everything will come your way. So don't give up. Don't shy away from a challenge. Challenge yourself as a human being and just go put everything into it and, and you know, make the best of it. Well, there you have it. Inspirational words from the continental champion, uh, Brandon Taser. That's all we've got time for today. Uh, we're going to be back next week. And until then, protect yourselves at all times. We're out.